Hello, welcome back. My name is Shelley and we're here today to talk about FIP. What's FIP? So, where do we start? What is FIP? Well, basically, it's coronavirus. Ever possibly imagine ever happening to your babies. So, where do we start? What is FIP? Well, basically, it's coronavirus. But, hold on. <coughs> coronavirus in cats is not the same as what you get in humans. The coronavirus that cats get is completely different. In fact, it's one of the biggest killers in cats around the world. So how does it turn into FIP? Well, that's what I'm here today to tell you about. Coronavirus is normally shed through feces or through oral contact. And unfortunately, if you're living in a house with not two, but three, but four, but five, guarantee one of those cats will probably be carrying coronavirus. Coronavirus comes in two forms. That's the wet form and the dry form. So let's go through the three stages of FIT. The first stage, the middle stage, and the last stage. It's really important that you know how to diagnose FIP. The early stages to look out for are fever, high temperatures that may change, can be up or down fevers. They probably will go off of their food, probably not want to eat as much, they seem a bit more lethargic. You'll start to see a weight loss, rapid weight loss, probably around the front area of the body and the back end of the body. In the mid stages, you're gonna to start to see sickness, maybe diarrhea, very watery diarrhea, and it does have a kind of a smell to it as well. Last of all, the late stages of FIP. Now, this is the, the really hard part because once the cat gets to the late stages of FIP, there really is a really slim chance of the cat getting over a virus. Late stage symptoms to look for are, your cat will start to lose its ability to stand, run, jump, uh, you'll start to notice some neurological signs. Now when I'm talking about examining your cat, talking about wet fib, when I talk about the abdominal area, I'm using him as an example. Here you will see around the belly area below here is where it will actually start to come out like a balloon. And uh, when the cat is laying on his side, start to feel it. And if it starts to feel like a bit of a water balloon in there, then that's when you know something isn't right. Now these are the worst of the worst. Normally when a cat is at this stage, we would say that this is the last point of no return. Normally if the cat does survive the last stage of FIP, your cat will suffer from some neurological disorders. Unfortunately, these are irreversible. Sometimes we just have to take a breather, you know? You know what, it's been a really hot day. Rain is just melting away here. Okay, so let's talk about the dry form of FIP. Dry form of FIP is the less common of the two. Fever, we have loss of appetite, diarrhea, sickness. Cats diagnosed with dry FIP also have a very low mortality rate. Once diagnosed, they only have about five weeks to a couple of months. Now I'm gonna show you some pictures of cats with FIP, just to show you what it can look like. This is the wet form FIP. Did you say Corona? Um, does that mean that, that, you know, if my cat's got coronavirus, can I catch coronavirus? Do I have to give my cat away? When coronavirus started for us humans, it was going crazy. Everybody was panicking and then it all switched. It all turned on to the animals. Has my cat got coronavirus? Did my cat give me coronavirus? So then what happened next? Well, as you can imagine, thousands of cats were put up for adoption. Thousands of dogs were thrown into shelters. Actually, if we rewind that, I don't even think they took them to the shelters. Thousands of cats and dogs were abandoned on the streets because they thought that coronavirus was potentially coming or being passed on through animals. So these poor defenseless babies were being told that they carry coronavirus and that if you was to touch one of them, that you was gonna catch it. So as time went on, people got a bit more educated and they understood a little bit more about coronavirus and realized that that wasn't the case. And then came the point where people were then stuck in their houses for months and months on end. 
Now that we know that cats and dogs won't give me coronavirus, I think it's safe that we can adopt. The most wonderful thing happened around the world. All the shelters and all the street animals were all being taken in and adopted and loved and cared for. People didn't have jobs so they couldn't go to work and, and then they realized, wow, isn't this amazing? Wish I'd have done it sooner. We can't imagine life without them. So I know you're waiting for the big question, how to treat FIP. So these drugs come in two forms. One is an oral and one is an injection. So I just want to mention that this is a very costly treatment process and therefore it's always good to make sure you have some extra cash just in case. Now the oral capsules are recommended for cats who are in the early stages of FIP, for the cats who are eating and going to the toilet normally. Now the injection. It's better to start the injections on both forms of FIP. This gives the cat more of a chance of a higher survival rate. There has been an 89% success rate with cats who have been using the injections for fit. Clear improvements have been seen in the first seven days. That means their appetite has started to come back. The toileting has started to settle. You can see that the injections are starting to work. Only if you have caught the FIP early enough, the injections have more of a chance of working. So really, it's absolutely amazing news that now we have treatments for FIP. Years ago, that was impossible. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been very helpful for you and for all the cat lovers out there that are extremely worried about their cats contracting FIP. Now I'm gonna leave some useful links for you down below so you can have a read up about FIP and coronavirus in cats. And if you have any other questions, feel free to email me or message me via my social media.